I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to talk about quilt binding. Many of you have expressed to me that you don't understand how to bring those ends together and going around those corners is a nightmare that you just give up. So I'm going to take the confusion and the fear out of putting on quilt binding. So keep in mind that the process is the same no matter if you're doing a large quilt, a table runner, a placemat, or even this sewing machine cover, or excuse me, organizer, a toaster cover, a pot holder, or even this tiny little drink coaster. So I'm gonna take the confusion and the fear out of putting on your quilt binding. So let's get started. Let's start with your strips. Okay, now, the way I do my binding, I require my strips to be a little bit wider. Mine are two and three quarter inches. A traditional quilter probably makes their strips about two and a half inches and there's nothing wrong with that, okay? Also, a traditional quilter, because I get questions about this, put the ends of their strips together. So if you're making a great big quilt, okay, let me get this turned around, you are probably used to putting your strips, the ends of your strips together like this, because when you're making a big quilt, you're probably gonna have four, five, six strips, and they're usually put on like this, and then Stitch from this corner over to that corner, okay, the corner of the other strip. Then you would cut this part off, trim it down to a quarter of an inch, and then open this up. Now, the reasoning why quilters do it this way is because when you fold it in half, it's not as bulky. Okay, so that's why they do it that way. If you're used to doing it that way, there's, there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. Now let me show you how I do it because I think my way is a lot easier and less complicated. All right, I just bring the two ends together like that, stitch them together, anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. Then just finger press it open or press it with your iron and then Fold your strip in half and press the full length of the strip. Now, it's not that bulky this way. A little bit more than the other way, but not enough to where you need to worry about it. Okay, so that's why I do it this way. Okay, now that we have that straightened out, let me show you how I put it on. Because some of you are getting confused and you're not getting good results. All right, so. Take the end of your binding, and no matter what you're making, just place it somewhere in the middle on one of the sides of your project. Like I said, it doesn't matter what you're making. So place it down, then begin pinning it down. Now, you don't want to start sewing right here at this end. You want to go in four or five inches and leave this unstitched for the moment. Then you're going to, from this raw edge, stitch 3 8 A traditional quilter usually does a quarter of an inch. I happen to like my binding to be bigger because I think binding also adds a lot of personality to your quilt and I want it to stand out with all the other stuff that's going on in your project. So stitch and stop when you get 3 8 of an inch away from this raw edge, okay? Leave your needle down, press your foot up. Your needle is down in there as you turn it. Then you stitch at a 45 degree angle right into that corner here. Okay, right there. Now take it out of your machine. Fold it out away from you like this. Make sure that this is on a straight line right here. Then press down with one finger and fold it over back towards you. Now, your fold line should be even with the raw edge there from the side you just stitched on. And then it also should be even along this raw edge. So, begin pinning it down. 
all the way down that one side. All right. After you've pinned it down, then you're going to start here at this fold line, 3 8 from here, and stitch down all the way down, except when you get to the corner again like you did here, needle down, press your foot up, and stitch right into that corner. So you're going to do that on all four corners. All right, now, when your strips of binding come together, you're going to take a ruler and take this edge of your ruler and put it on the edge of the binding. And mark with your pencil, I've got a little pencil mark right there, or a fabric marker, Mark a line there. That's where you want to overlap. So you're going to overlap the other piece and pull it back a little bit and put a line on the top one. Then you're going to cut it right there like this. Okay? There you go. Now bring your two ends together by unfolding the binding. Okay, and when you bring the ends together, you're going to kind of fold your project in just a little bit because it'll be easier to bring your ends together. Then take pins and pin it across here. Then stitch half inch. Now, if you find it came out too tight when you unfolded it, then you still have some leeway here, some fabric in which you can let the seam out if you need to. Okay, so it's easier to shorten it up than to try to make it long. You can't do it that way. So then fold it in half. Make sure you finger press that seam open. Finish pinning it down and do your last side of stitching. Okay, when you're done, it should look like this. All four corners are going around like this. Okay. Now you want to unfold it and turn it over to the back. And I usually push down on the corner and tug a little bit to get it to go over that corner. Okay, then this is how you do your corners. It's really easy. You want to take this fold line and bring it past the stitch line. All right, so take it, pin it down. Then go over to the other side, fold it past the stitch line. Now you've got this bump here. All right, so take a straight pin, press down and in, fold it over, and then pin it. Okay, continue pinning all the way around and do all your corners like this. Okay, when it's done, it should look like this. Now you're ready to stitch, but before you stitch, because some of you said it's just not catching the binding as you stitch. So here's a little trick you can do. Before you stitch, before you have to go back and rip stuff out, take a straight pin, go right down there in that ditch, push it through, and if it goes through the binding, then you know you've got it in the right place and test it all the way around just to make sure, especially if this has been an issue with you. Okay, then your last step is to stitch in the ditch. All right, so you're going to stitch right next to the binding but not on it and stitch all the way down to this corner. When you get to this corner, leave that needle down, turn it and stitch to the other corner and continue all the way around. So when you're done, this is what it's going to look like on the back. Now, if you're interested in making a hanging pot holder, it's just a few more steps. In fact, you can make a square hanging pot holder, a round hanging pot holder, and even a hanging oven mitt. In fact, I have lots of videos on pot holders. So click on the playlist at the end of the video in the upper right hand corner and you can learn how to make all of those pot holders. Now if you like this video click on that thumbs up button and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends and don't forget to click on subscribe 
enter your email address and then click on that little bell so that you receive future email notifications about my latest video. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and we're so glad you came to our sewing room. We'll see you next time and happy sewing.